All right. Um, okay. Ready? Yes. Action. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, action. <laughs> I am here with Jeff, and we're just going to take some time and talk about your life. Okay. Dive into it, and we're going to, because, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. uh, but you, this is your first uh, pastor that you took up here in Lisbon, is that correct? Well, I was a youth pastor before. Okay. I was a youth pastor in Indianapolis. Okay. That's kind of where my story starts, I guess. Okay, you so want, you want to get into all that. Well, let's start at the beginning there. What, did okay. you, when, how did you, when did you come to the Lord? How did you come to the Lord? Oh. And just kind of, when did you get called into the ministry? Uh, and So when I was little, I mean like four and a half, mm -hmm. some guy came to my church and showed this video about a Christian guy who rode motorcycles okay. and a non-Christian guy who rode motorcycles. And if you know anything about the 80s mm -hmm. and Christian movies, one of those guys was going to die and go to heaven and one of them was going to die and go to hell. Yeah. And... Uh, I can still, in my mind's eye, I can still see one of the demons in hell and how scary that was. Mm. And so my salvation from the time I was about four and a half until uh, my teenage years, I did have a falling away period, but it was based on fear of hell more mm. than a love of Christ yeah. and understanding his love for me. Yeah. And so there was a really, it was more I was a Christian because I was afraid mm. of hell more than I understood the fear of the Lord. Mm. And so that's kind of... Uh, where that all happened. Um, when I was in third grade, I remember cutting out a, a country uh, a stencil of China, and I felt like the Lord whispered, the Holy Spirit said, someday I'm going to send you there. Mm. And I even remember turning around. There was a girl, her name was Emily Whitlow. She was sitting behind me, and I said, what'd you say? And she was like, nothing. And it was just so real. Yeah. And I went home and I told my mom, I'm going to be a missionary someday. And uh, after high school, I kind of spent a year trying to find out what God had for me and felt like he was calling me to, to ministry. I didn't really want to do the missionary thing. I didn't mm. want to do the pastor thing. There's no money in it. Mm. I wanted to make a solid, comfortable living, be a good Christian who goes to church on Sunday, which is funny. I, and I believe when that I believe, in a sense, God will give you the desires of your heart if your desires of your heart aren't Him. Mm. And it's a very uncomfortable place to be. Mm. But ultimately, that's what ended up happening with me. But that's getting ahead of myself. Mm. Um, I felt like the call of the ministry. So I went to Trinity Bible College in Ellendale and moved from a little town in southern Illinois, mm. you know, halfway across the country in the missions program. Lived all this, all this time close to Canada. Had opportunities to go to Mexico first piece of foreign soil my foot ever touched was Hong Kong hmm. and it was a layover yeah and I'm like that's the fulfillment God I'm done because <laughs> I did an internship in Sri Lanka for two months uh, in between my junior and senior year of Trinity and just realized I'm not cut out for long-term missions mm -hmm. but I think God will sometimes call us or lead us in a direction to get us where he ultimately wants us mm -hmm. to go and so that happened and then I, I met my wife of course because it's Bible college it's what you do and uh, uh, we, after I had graduated from Trinity, we took a youth pastor position in Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. And that's where everything really, like the last 15 years of my life, really kind of leads to where I'm at now. Yeah. So, um, am I talking too much? I don't no, want to. no. <laughs> okay. No. Um, so I, I took this youth pastor position and right out of the gate it was just it was miserable um the youth group was growing we grew from five to about 30 and then drop out back down to nothing mm -hmm. and then we'd grow to about 50 and i resigned <laughs> so yeah. we were there about a year and a half um left for about a year went back to the church free of charge after i started working in juvenile probation mm -hmm. in indianapolis which i never in my life would have thought i would work with law enforcement or do what i did yeah very scary job at times um, but I did that and went back because I love the kids and the work for the pastor again for completely for free. Mm. Did that for about a year and just, again, some of the stuff that uh, I, I don't want to get too far into it, but the pastor I worked for was just a monster. I mean, I, I question so much about, uh, stuff he told me if it was true and things of that nature. And so I got very bitter. Um, I still tried to find ministry jobs because that's where my heart was. Yeah. 
And I actually just preached on this recently at my church. Um, we talked about rejection. And I had pastors for three years, from 2009 to 2012. I had a pastor tell me I was damaged goods. Mm. I had a pastor tell me uh, nobody would want to hire me because I'd be a project. Mm. I had a pastor um, say he couldn't afford me because I was educated, because <laughs> I had a Bible college education. Huh, yeah. And so all this stuff happened, and I was just like, oh, man. And I, I got a chance to work with a pastor who, as we talked, He'd gone through a very similar situation. He'd worked for a similar senior pastor. Mm -hmm. He had ended up working as a parole officer. I worked in a probation setting. We got him on the both sides of the prison system. And I thought, you know, this is 2012. My oldest daughter's three years old. My wife was pregnant at the time. And I remember praying. I was like, God, if this doesn't work out, because this is the guy that's going to give me my second chance. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the guy that's going to help me prove that I'm not crazy, that I, I'm called. And so if this doesn't work out, I'm done. And uh, my wife miscarried. Mm -hmm. And so she had to have surgery. And it was a really hard time for us. But I, she said, I want you to go ahead and go, with this, go to this interview. So I you know, flew up to Minnesota with my oldest daughter. was three at the time. And thought we'd nailed the interview. I mean, Evie, my daughter, just stole the show. She was just adorable. Yeah. Everybody loved her. A sweet girl. And get home and... He calls me up about a week later and was like, hey, man, I, I just can't hire you. Mm. I was like, oh, okay. I let my credentials lapse. I tried to uh, minister to Mormons because mm -hmm. I'd always kind of had, my great uncle was a Mormon, and I'd always kind of had a heart for the Mormon people. Um, I ordered a Book of Mormon and had him come to my house. Yeah. I'm now blacklisted by the Mormon church, I think, <laughs> because they'll talk to me one time and I'll never see them again. Yeah. And... Um, Anyway, uh, so I let my credentials lapse in 2012, and I said, I'm, God's done with me. Mm -hmm. Whatever I'm on earth to do in ministry, I'm, I've done it. And that's when I started to live a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of got involved in a church in Indianapolis called Life Church, fantastic church. They were very good to us. And we healed a little bit, but I, every time I would go to a church service, I would realize how hurt I really was, yeah. and I wouldn't deal with it. I would just kind of, you know, <clears throat> man up, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. bury it. And uh, I had my comfortable job. I moved to an office position in probation, much safer mm -hmm. than my field work I'd been doing for four years, four and a half years. And then uh, an opportunity came up. We wanted to move closer to my wife's family. My wife is from North Dakota. And so an opportunity came up for me to work for the railroad. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, took a position uh, with BNSF. Um, which was a, you know, we moved to make a lot of money because the railroad pays really well. Yeah. But unfortunately, it was incredibly stressful. I went through a really bad time. I almost ruined my marriage. Um, had thoughts of suicide daily. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really rough. And thank God the railroad laid me off. Yeah. And so, um, I guess, I mean, I guess you'd say I, I kind of hit my rock bottom as an adult, and my wife refused to leave me, so that was good. Yeah. <laughs> kind of had hoped that she, you know, would, would at least be mad at me, but she forgave me, and she loved me, and, and we prayed together, which we hadn't done much since we left ministry, and uh, that was 2015, and uh, I went to work for Verizon a couple months after being laid off. It was funny, because I, I just told somebody this tonight uh, here at Ministers in Richmond, um, I moved to North Dakota to make a lot of money, but it's like every job I've taken since leaving that railroad mm -hmm. job, I've taken a huge pay cut. But I've been happier, and things have worked out, and we've been again to heal. Um, my time at Verizon was, was good. My wife got a good job. Um, and we I got an opportunity to move clo really close to my in-laws in Valley City, North Dakota. Yeah. And that's where uh, we got plugged into New Life Church in Valley City, and we finally began to heal. Um, mm. Lucas Offenkamp was the pastor, mm. you know, Lucas. And, and I remember telling Lucas, don't ask me to teach. Don't ask me to do anything. I just want to come to church, man. Yeah. I just, I'll, I'll support you as long as you'll have me in your church. Mm. And uh, a few months later, and if you know Lucas, he's like, hey, can you cover for me for a Wednesday night? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, he goes, yeah. well, it's just watching a YouTube video and talking. Mm. 
which is funny um, because that night I said, okay, I'll do it. But that night I had a panic attack. Like I've had two panic attacks in my entire life. This was the second one. The first one I woke up in the middle of the night from a nightmare and it was stupid. But uh, I remember I was at fifth and second in Valley City and I started panicking that I was going to mess this up because of everything that had happened to me as a youth pastor. I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up so bad, and Lucas is going to kick me out of his church. Mm. And my, my kids are starting to like it here. My wife's starting to like it here. I'm probably going to end up having to go to some Reformed Baptist church because the only thing I, I could get along with Calvinists, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I remember I just started praying. I was like, God, things are finally starting to go well, and I'm going to mess this up. And I'm having a hard time breathing, and I, I hear the Holy Spirit just tell me, Jeff. It's watching YouTube and talking. You do those things every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. And then after that, of course, like I said, if you know Lucas, I began teaching every Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, Lucas resigned, and he took a job uh, in Devil's Lake uh, for the district. Uh, Dave Bennett, uh, Dr. Bennett from Trinity, ended up being our interim pastor, and he knew me as a student at Trinity. And he attended one of my classes and said, hey, can we go out to lunch? on Sunday after church. I said, sure. So we, we go out to lunch and he says, you need to get your credentials back. I said, no, let me tell you what's not going to happen. Yeah. So um, he kind of convinced me to do it. And so this is all his fault. Uh, <laughs> but um, how, lo how long ago was that? when you? That was in 2018, uh, okay. just last year. Mm -hmm. um, it's And that's what's incredible. It was like April 2018. And I I had to call the Indiana District, you know, to get my credentials transferred yeah. and to show North Dakota that I hadn't had any moral failures mm -hmm. or anything. And the lady on the phone was like, oh, you were at such and such church. And I said, yeah, but I left before things got really crazy because after we left, that pastor had kind of yeah. scorched earth everything. And, and she goes, yeah, you did. And she said, but you know God has a plan. Mm -hmm. And she goes, it sounds like you're getting back in ministry, and that's awesome. So we know God's going to do something great for you. Okay. And I was like, okay, you know. And the following Sunday, I told Dave Bennett, I said, I think I'm going to get my credentials back. I called Indianapolis, and my wife and I, we prayed about it. I think I'm ready to start preaching again. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, you know, that's really good news. I know the Lisbon Church is looking for a pastor. And there will be others who are looking for a pastor. And when he said that, there was this check in my heart. They said, Lisbon, where is that? You yeah. know, there was just something. The, the minute he said that, it hit me. And I was like, okay. And it, even, you know, when we would talk about, my wife and I would talk about the possibilities. I remember her saying several times, you always mention pastoring in Lisbon. Lisbon's probably going to find a pastor mm -hmm. by the time we're ready to pastor. And I said, yeah, I'm just, just saying, you know, it's hypothetical. Yeah. And I get my credentials back, and Pastor Wes, we were still kind of in a, a between Lucas and uh, Pastor Terry Detweiler, mm. uh, we were in the, the transition between pastors, and Pastor Wes King, our youth pastor, said, would you preach Sunday? Like, I just got my credentials back, and I'm preaching in my home church mm. now. I said, yeah, sure. And I called Brother Ben, I said, hey, I just got my credentials back, and I'm already preaching in Valley City. He said, would you want to preach in Lisbon? Mm. And I said, uh, sure, you know. And the rest is history. I preached about once a month in Lisbon. They talked to me about considering pastoring. I said, no. Yeah. I have to sit under a good pastor at least for a year mm -hmm. to know what that's like, to, to know how a good pastor is. Yeah. And thank God for Pastor Terry because he has been very patient with me and mentored me very thoroughly <laughs> as, best yeah. as, he, as best as anybody could mentor me. <laughs> he, uh, he has uh, this past year, and almost year and a half now, um, and been such a blessing. And uh, so um, in April, my son was born, and that day I sent my resume to the district and was like, hey, my, my kid's born. I'm looking to pastor, you know. And I would preached about once a month in Lisbon. I talked with our superintendent about Lisbon, and it just seemed like everything was pushing us that yeah. way, and I was more than happy to because it's a, it's a great community, um, awesome town. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful church and so that's that's kind of how i got where i'm at so so would you have any suggestions on so you were so from that last uh youth pastor position to to lisbon here mm -hmm. the, being the, the senior pastor how long was that so i left for the last time into in like 
I want to say May of 2009. Okay, so that's... And about 10 years later, I'm okay. the pastor now. So. so would you have any recommendations for for someone uh, that's maybe in a similar boat? Where yeah, maybe absolutely. Maybe they were just... So this is, this is something that somebody told, took me aside. Uh, his name was Jim Palmer. He was a great man of God from Indiana. Mm. And I'm, I'm walking out the door for the last time of that church, and he's the assistant pastor. He's not the head pastor. He had his issues as well. And yeah. He, he pulls me aside and he goes, Jeff, God has a purpose for your life. God has a calling on your life. Don't ever doubt that again. Mm. And, you know, okay. You know, that's what you're supposed to mm. say, right? So that's what people will tell you is some stuff that they're, you feel they're supposed to be yeah. telling you. Yeah. And he said, everything that's going to happen between now and the time you're in, in ministry again, God's going to use it to make you an effective pastor. Mm. And I can tell you, in the four months, only four months that I've been the senior pastor of that church, my stomach just growled, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, um, the four months I've been, can you edit that out? Don't, uh, don't do it. I'm it, not even it makes sure it, they heard it. Really, okay. But... <laughs> it makes it less real if you edit it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Uh, in the four months I've been in Lisbon, I can look back and I can see stuff that's happened. Mm. You know, uh, there's a guy who lives near the church who has has had a, kind of a rough background, and I don't have. I'm not intimidated by him. Yeah. I mean, I love the guy. He's a big teddy bear. Mm. But I think some guys would see him and go, "Oh man, I better call the cops." Mm. You know, and um, and there have been instances where uh, guys have come to me like, "Hey, I've done prison time," and New people coming to the church yeah. saying stuff like this, and it's like okay, mm. you know, I, I don't flinch because of I had seven years mm -hmm. working in probation. Wow. Um, mm. You know, I, I got a lady in my church. Her husband works for the railroad or worked for the railroad, retired mm. railroad, and we just sat and talked about the railroad one day for like I don't know, fifteen minutes on the yeah. phone, and she's like, I don't think a pastor has ever talked to him about his job. Mm. So when I say this to anybody who's going through this scenario. Maybe you were in ministry at one point and you feel like God's forgotten about you or given up on you or whatever it was you were brought on earth to do, you've done. Your calling is not fulfilled till you're dead. Hmm. So don't give up on that. Hmm. Um, you will have those moments where you're frustrated. I remember quite a few days yelling in my car, why do I have student loan debt to a Bible college? Yeah. You know, I'm not even in ministry, you know. <laughs> uh, so angry at God. And and just, you know, after I get it all out, okay, God, I'm sorry. You know, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but at the same time, I look back and it's like the, the training I got as a probation officer, communication skills, um, dealing with conflict. I, I was horrible with conflict mm. as a youth pastor. Mm. I would just like... I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. You know, now it's like, man, calm down. You know, yeah. or I don't know why you're yelling at me. My voice is right here. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, stuff like that. Um, thankfully, I've not had, for the record, I've not had anybody yell at me as a pastor yet. <laughs> uh, at least not that I can remember. But mm. um, so I mean, all of your experiences, whatever God is taking you through, in some way or another, I believe will make you a better pastor. Um, and make the most of it. Be busy while you wait on mm. that. Um, you know, look for opportunities to minister again. And if you're hurt, if you were, if you feel like you were ruined in ministry, and you come into a church and you see, you know, we're Pentecostal, yeah. and I remember going to Pentecostal churches and seeing somebody raise their hands in worship, and in my mind, in my heart, going, yeah, he's probably going home and hitting his wife, you know, <laughs> with those same hands, you know, yeah. it's like. Because I was so bitter, and um, you're going to have PTSD. I don't like to call it PTSD. It's emotional baggage, but whatever you want to call it, you're going to have that. Yeah. And it's okay to have that. Um, you're going to have those moments where you go, I don't want to be in church. And t take a Sunday off, but try to get back in, mm. because you're going to heal you're not going to heal sitting at home being angry. You're not going to heal sitting at home being hurt. You, you know, I, I think of the church as a hospital for the spiritually broken, the sp spiritually wounded, yeah. and it should be. And you're not going to heal if you don't go to the hospital. And so for those people who are in that, that time, 
God's going to use it, but you've got to kind of do your part too, I think. Mm. So That's good. Well, that's, that's really it. I, You know, I, when, when I was thinking about doing this, I didn't think it would kind of take this angle, but it's great that it's going this way. Cool. If you're, I need to try to figure out the right title to communicate this point here. So we'll talk that over. But hopefully if you've landed on this video uh, and this is something that you're dealing with, that this can be an encouragement for you, just this testimony yeah. uh, that you're hearing here. And just remember that, you know, if God's called you, like like yeah. Jeff was saying, if God's called you, it doesn't end because you maybe you had a mistake in a previous ministry or just it didn't go well or a bad break or whatever it is. That calling stays with you for your life. Yeah. And uh, so hopefully... If that is you watching this, hopefully you know you find encouragement in that and and take take those suggestions to heart. So, yeah. but with that, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you, Jeff, for allowing me to do this. Absolutely, just sharing your testimony there. Really appreciate that. And Make sure you hit like and subscribe. Hey, right? are you supposed to say that? I don't if that know. works. Yeah, he's supposed never, to say that. Sorry. Yeah, I, I guess I don't normally. Maybe I should more. And I have more subscribers. <laughs> but but thanks. Do. We appreciate appreciate awesome. you doing that. So cool. thanks for watching, guys.